Hey friends, I know wall isn't a strange thing to you. You probably see it everywhere, every day. But there are stuff you need to know about wall apart from just seeing it around, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. You know, there are different kind of wall. A wall can be structural and it can be non-structural. But my concern is going to be on structural wall. A wall is said to be structural if it is built with stone, block, brick, concrete, RCC, timber or steel that is a structural wall then if a wall is built with a glass it is termed a non-structural wall or any form of non-structural material apart from glass a wall is a vertical element that is erected over a defined space which provides support to other structural elements like slab beams and floor wall may be used to provide security and also to make boundary for earth and water or boundaries between countries or states there are several functions of wall and these include one to sustain vertical load two to sustain lateral or horizontal load lateral is still the same thing as horizontal to define an area or to make a demarcation to provide security and to prevent soil erosion there are two types of structural wall based on the condition of loading one we have the load bearing wall and two we have the non-load bearing wall. A load bearing wall is a wall that is designed to sustain part of the load from other structural elements like beam and slab. On the other hand, a non-load bearing wall is a wall that carries no load except its safe weight. That is a non-load bearing wall. Now the question is, how do you identify a load bearing wall from a non-load bearing wall? You know, you see wall every day, I see wall every day. But how do you identify the wall you see if it is a load bearing or a non-load bearing wall there are several ways you can identify them but i have few here one if the wall is an external wall definitely it is a load bearing wall that is the number one way of identifying a load bearing wall if a beam or slab is directly or indirectly sitting over a wall then the wall is a load bearing wall if the roof is directly sitting on it it is a load bearing wall and if the wall is used to retain or to make a boundary for earth or water, it is a load bearing wall. If a wall can be successfully removed without replacing it with a beam and column, it is a load bearing wall. As a structural engineer, you don't make constructions based on your want, but on the client's want. So your clients may say to you that, oh, engineer, I don't need a wall at this point. I would like to establish so, so, so thing here, but the wall won't allow it. The wall is a barrier for me. Could you please remove it? You know, as the engineer, your job is to remove the wall without the whole building coming down or without the whole building collapsing. Do you need to provide a simple frame? When I say a simple frame, I mean a beam and two or more columns to replace that wall. So if the answer is yes, then the wall is definitely a load bearing wall types of load bearing wall one we have the mercenary wall we have the shear wall we have the retaining wall we have the precast concrete wall and we have the pre-panelized metal stored wall a mercenary wall is a wall that is built with block brick or stone and then binded by mortar this wall is the most common load bearing wall you can find it both in frame structure and load bearing structure system like bungalow and they support roof, floor, lintel, and, and the likes. And the next is shear wall. A shear wall is a reinforced concrete wall that is provided to prevent the effect of lateral loads like wind load and earthquake load on your frame structure. It is generally used in high-rise building or building with several stories because the higher your building, the more it is being subjected to wind force. In order for your frame structure not to sway, a load bearing wall called shear wall is provided and apart from these lateral forces it also supports the beam slab and other elements in your building thereby sustaining both lateral and gravity load when i say gravity load i mean the vertical load from the beam slab and other elements on the shear wall the shear wall is usually positioned at the end of the building with no openings in there no openings for window or doors in there next is the retaining wall Retaining walls are load-bearing walls constructed to retain earth, water, or any filling material. In artwork, when I say artwork, artwork is a work involving cutting and filling of a land. 
you understand when you have the island you cut it island like a hilly area and a low area like valley you have to fill it up so a work involving cut and fill is called artwork so in artwork a retaining wall may be built at the side of the court the side at which you cut it can be built at the bank of the river to protect the bank we use retaining wall to retain soil in order to avoid soil erosion and prevent the area from saturation retaining wall is also used to divert water to another source or direction such as we use it in dam the stress that is acting on this wall is also a lateral wall due to the soil or water that is acting on it a retaining wall should appropriately be designed and constructed to bear this lateral stress the material used for constructing the retaining wall may include concrete it can be reinforced concrete it can be stone it can be timber and it can be steel Retaining wall is also called breast wall or you call it revetment wall. However, if a retaining wall is retaining soil on the back side and retaining water at the front side, it is called a sea wall or a bog head. Next is the precast concrete wall. Precast concrete wall is a reinforced concrete wall that has been casted in a convenient environment and then transported to the site for installation. It is lifted to position by forklift and placed on a wedge or something you can call a cover block. This is because we want to provide a space for the connection between the precast wall and the ground. You make a formwork around this space and fill a light concrete into the wall from the top. And that's all. Oh, for the edges, you, you hold them in position with a bracket, a corner bracket. This wall can also be precasted in such a way that window openings are already provided in them or door openings. A precast concrete wall is usually durable, moisture resistant and has high insulation against fire resistance and sound. Then we have the pre-panelized metal stored wall. As it sounds, pre-panelized. The metal stored would have been fabricated off-site into a wall with a defined area in a panelization plant. The place where it is prefabricated is called a panelization plant. It is being welded and brought to the site for erection. The metal stored is usually stainless steel and it can be aluminum or copper. I mean the kind of metal they use for its fabrication. You can make a complete steel frame structure with a pre-panelized metal stored. And just like other load bearing walls, pre-panelization metal stored walls support gravity load and seismic load, also the wind load. When I say seismic load, I mean earthquake load and, and the likes. Now, the types of non-load bearing wall. Under non-load bearing wall, you have the partition wall, you have the panel wall, and you have the demarcation or fence wall. The partition wall. A partition wall is an interior non-load bearing wall which is provided to divide a large space or a large area into three, two or more. They only carry their self weight and nothing else. And next is the panel wall. Although a panel wall is an exterior wall, but it should never be confused as a load bearing wall. There are exterior non-load bearing walls generally made with wood and they are used for aesthetic purposes. They are used in frame structure and they are supported at each stories. And if it is not a building with several stories, there will be some beams, like a propped beam that will be supporting the um, panel, the panel wall. The panel wall is usually made with wood or timber. A demarcation or fence wall. They are walls that are built with bricks, block, concrete, or steel, and they are used to define a boundary. We use them to define a boundary. Therefore, they don't carry or support any load other than the self weight. They are just to make a demarcation like, oh, this is the end of my land or this is the end of United States. We use demarcation wall for security purpose as well. In earlier days, demarcation walls are built around the country or around a fortress for security purpose. In case a wall occurs, I mean an all-out war, it will take the enemy several days or months with a lot of ammunition to breach the demarcation wall, if at all they succeed in breaching the wall. An example of such demarcation wall is the Berlin Wall in Germany. 
So this is all I've got for today. 